Hey there, welcome to my channel. Today we are about to program an MQL4 indicator which can show you the support and resistance levels. Let's get started. First of all, we have to discuss what exactly is a support or resistance. For example, how will you describe it mathematically? Like you can see that this right here may be a resistance level. This might be a support level. But it is important to describe these formations mathematically to be able to program a support or resistance indicator. The way I would do it is to check the highest high of a given period, let's say 10. For example, at this candle, the highest high of the last 10 bars might, might be this, or last 20 bars. And then I'll have a look at the bars before this high, and if this is the highest high of, let's say, the last 20 bars, and the last 40 bars also, it means that there is no higher high in this given period. So the price went up and that was the, that's the highest high right now. But what is also important to see a bounce back. So for example, if it went up and it stayed here, it would not be a resistance level only if the price went down after it. So let's try and implement this logic in MQL4. So after we have created our new indicator, we can finally start coding. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to add the properties of this indicator. We know that it is going to be displayed on the window, so on the chart actually, and it won't be in a different window, in a separated window. We know that we have to have two indicator buffers, one for the resistance and one for the support. Let's say we want to have a red color for the support or for the resistance and a green color for the other one. We want both to have the width of two, because in my opinion, with uh, a width of one, which is the basic setting, it is too thin. As you could guess, we would have two input parameters, one for the per period, so this is how many bars we are going to look back, so if the peri period is 20, we are looking back 20 bars and an overlook uh, input parameter which will give us the extra amount of bars we want to look at. So for example if the this is the highest high of the last 20 bars, if the overlook is 10 we will look before these bars, these 10 bars, so we know for sure that this is the highest high in this given period and it is not like falling down, like not going down from here because this is right this right here is, is not a resistance but if we looked at the last 20 periods from right here this may be the highest high but it's not a resistance because from 20 it seems like it's resistance from 30 bars you know that it is not resistance level we will have two indicator buffers a resistance and a support buffer now we want to write the support and resistance uh, functions. First of all, the resistance functions, it looks like this. You want to see where you start. This is the starting bar. Well, first of all, there's a high one uh, variable. This is the highest high in the last uh, period bars from the starting bar. There is a high two, which is the highest high in the last period plus overlook bars from the starting bar. And if these are equal, we know that we have a resistance level, so we will return high one, as we will return zero. The support function is similar to this. We have a low one, which is the lowest low in the last period bars, and low two, which is the lowest low in the period plus overlook bars. And if these two are equal, we will return one of them as we will return to zero. So what do we want to do in the init function? First of all, we want to set the buffers. Let's say that the buffer zero is the rest buffer and the buffer one is the support buffer. We want to have a short name for, the, for an indicator, which will be box and the input parameter period. But you can choose any name you want. You can choose support resistance or anything you want. And we want to set the index drawbridge in for 
the zero and the one buffer at the zeroth bar. And then we return initialize succeeded. And now we have to write the onCalculate function. This is where the magic happens. So what do we want to do now? We want to see whether there is a valid resistance and a support too at the same time and the prices between them. And if this thing happens, we will get the support and resistance value and we will store them in the buffers, in the indicator buffers until the price breaks out of either the support or the resistance. That is basically the idea of this indicator. So first of all, we want to have two static variables, a box and a saved minimum and a saved maximum. The reason for this is because whenever we find a support and a resistance level, we want to have want to set the box for true and the saved minimum will be the support and the saved maximum will be the resistance levels. Now, if the rates total is less than the period plus the overlook or the period or and or the overlook is an invalid input, we want to return zero. We don't want to do anything with this kind of scenarios. The rates total is the amount of bars calculated until yet. If we wanted to do something when the rates total is less than the period plus the overlook, we actually would not be able to calculate anything because we would be at the end of the chart. Now we want to make sure that the arrays, the resistance buffer and the support buffer are not serious arrays because we want to go from the past to the future. The first element will be in the past and the last element will be in the future, will be the current bar actually. So we want to use the array set is series function both on the rest buffer and the sub buffer and we want to set them to false. We want to initialize these buffers with zeros. This way we know for sure that when there is no resistance, there is no support level, there the box is false, we basically have zero in the buffer so the indicator will not display anything. That's what we want to do. So now it's time for the calculations. This is the whole for loop that I'm going to uh, be explaining today. For i equals period plus overlook, i less than raise total, i plus plus. Basic for loop for any calculations, basically. Whenever you want to write a indicator, this is most likely the for loop that you are using. And now we want to have a two booleans, a, a bounce up and a bounce back. You can call this anyhow you want, this is not an ideal name for them, but that's what I came up with. The bounce up will mean that, well, the price went above the support level a bit, so it is not staying at the support level. The bounce back means that the price has gone, gone down from this resistance level, because as I said before, we want to avoid such situations when there is a resistance and a support too but the price is too close to the resistance for it to be called a resistance. So we initialize this bounce back and bounce up and bounce back variables. Bounce up is just purely mathematical. If the price, so the current close, is above the support, the current support, which is rates total minus i times two plus the resistance divided by three, so it is above one third of the uh, support level between i mean in the distance between the support and resistance then it is going to be a true value the bounce back is exactly the same but the opposite so the clause is less than two times the resistance plus one times the support divided by three pretty easy mathematics nothing special and nothing complicated right here so what do we want to do if there is a support at the current bar, which is again the raise of our minus the i. And if the resistance, this is actually used for pointers, I don't know why I used null here. And the resistance, raise of our minus i, exists as well, so there are both a, su a valid support and a valid resistance level, you know that we have a box. And there is a bounce back and there is a bounce up. So the price is between these two levels. And we have not initialized our box yet. Then we want to do the following things. 
sub buffer will be the support, of course, the rest buffer will be the resistance. The saved minimum will be the support, the saved maximum will be the resistance and the box will be true. So this if will not be activated, the conditions won't be true because the box will be true from now on. Now if there is a box right now, as you can see right here, if there is a box, so we know that we had previously a support and a resistance lock and the low of the current bar is still above the saved minimum and the high of the current bar is still below the saved maximum then we want to have the current uh, indicator buffer the, the indicator buffer at i to be the saved minimum and the resistance buffer to be the saved maximum so the same values as before this line we don't need right here i don't know why i wrote this here but if this does not happen so the low is below the saved minimum or the high is above the saved maximum so we had a breakout that's what i was talking about then we're going to again do the following things the sub buffer i will be the empty value which is zero it's a defined for zero and the rest buffer i will be empty value again so we are out of the box the box is set to false so we know for sure that from now on we want this uh, condition to be true because now the box is false otherwise we just want to have empty values and the sub buffer and the rest buffer and that's literally how easy it is to create this indicator. Let's run it. If I run it, I click run. It initializes on this chart. Here are the two input parameters. Let's say there is a 20 and a 10 overlook. And as you can see, the support and the resistance levels are calculated everywhere. And that's just how easy it was to create a support and resistance indicator. If you want to create your own grid or zone recovery strategy without writing a single line of code, please check out Manhedger EA. I will have a link in the description to the MT5 and the MT4 version. If you want to see more videos about free metatrader tools, EAs or indicators, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Now that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Have a great day. Cooking up a word of booze My niggas is